everyone, and welcome to another video from the folks at PowerPivot Pro. I'm here today to walk you through kind of a, a new and newish and easier uh, method of creating some disconnected slicers. Now, let's say that we have a scenario right here. So I have a uh, of a page in front of us, you know, a, a template, if you will, of of a report that we have. And in this report, we actually have a few different types of calculations. We have a sales amount, a forecast, and a budget amount. Now, what I'd like to do using a disconnected slicer is I would like to be able to create a toggle that lets me, on this report, with any data visible, be able to uh, easily and quickly select between my sales amount, my forecast amount, and my budget amount. And we've been able to do things like this for a long time with DAX um, and using disconnected tables and some switch functions and things like that. But what I want to show is a um, kind of a cleaner formula to use using variables and a value that came out last year called uh, selected values, which is a DAX function. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that and then show you how to, uh, to make that little radio button that will then let you toggle between the three. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and use the enter data button and I'm going to create my disconnected slicer table. And I'm just going to create three things. There's going to be my value selection, there's going to be the name of my column, and the table as well, selection, there we are. And I'm going to create three values that I want. I want to see my actuals, which is my sales amount, my budget, and my forecast. And that's all I'm going to do. Uh, if you've ever made a disconnected slicer before or read other articles on it, you might have seen where you needed an ID column or things like that. We won't have to do that here. Well, all we need is one column that lets us pick our values. I'm going to load that into my data model. All right, now that we have this calculation in here, I'm going to go ahead and create a slicer for that. So let me just copy and paste my year slicer just to use that as a nice little template. Uh, turn on snap objects. There we go. Let's put that right here. Put that right at the top of the page, front and center, and I'm going to update my value selection into it. All right, now we have the option to do actuals, budget, and forecast. You can see that it's not doing anything at the moment because we actually need to attach the DAX formulas to it to get this to work. All right, so let's do that next. All right, so I'm going to go over here to my DAX measures table up at the top. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select new measure. Beautiful. Now, this calculation that I'm going to write is going to be the uh, we can call this the value selection as well, equals, and I'm going to use something called variables. So my variable will be my selection. And this is going to be that selected value that I mentioned as the function in DAX. So selected value, there we are. And I'm going to point that to that value selection column that I have. And the alternative result is all. Now, before I move on, let me exactly walk through what this is doing. See if I can get that autocomplete to, to uh, the IntelliSense to fill up. So what selected value is telling us? This returns the value when there is only one value in the specified column selected. Otherwise, it returns the alternative result. So what this means is that it looks at this column. And if there's a single selection, meaning that I've picked something from my value selection over here, it will return that value. Otherwise, it returns all. Now, let me go ahead and just quickly return this as the result to show you what this output looks like. All right, I'm going to throw that right over here. Just as a, a quick and dirty card. All right, so it's returning all. And you can see as soon as I select budget, it returns budget. As soon as I select actuals, it returns the text for actuals. It's returning the value from that column if there's a single selection. Otherwise, it returns all. Working just like as you expected. All right, now let's go ahead and do the next step of the editing and add in our switch function so it will actually, instead of returning the text, it will return a value instead. So I'm going to go back to my little calculation over here, get rid of that selection. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a function called switch. Switch is like the wonderful, uh, think of it as a wonderful nested if statement. So switch true, and now if my selection that I have at the top, so if, if selection equals the word actuals, then return my sales amount. All right, in second condition, if my selection returns budget, then my budget amount. Last, if my selection equals 
forecast, then return my forecast amount. So this is no different in many ways than a nested if statement. It is checking each condition top down, first looking to see does the, uh, the selection at the top from my selected value function, is the output saying actual? If it is, return the sales amount. If the selection has the text equaling budget, return the budget amount return the forecast amount. And finally, if it, none of those are being met, meaning like there's neat, none of those first three conditions are met, what is my default else statement at the end? And by default, I would like it to return my sales amount. Now, the important thing that's happening right now and the reason that I declared a variable at the top, so if I had, instead of doing a variable selection, I had simply put the selected value in each of those three conditions, that means it would be getting evaluated three times which means it, it will require three times the performance hit to run that. Declaring a variable in nested if statements like this means it will run a lot faster. So it's often, um, if not just always, a best practice to do this. Going to go ahead and enter and run that. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this over again. Let's just quickly uh, take a look, test this. Bring a little card right up here to see what this looks like. So 45 million. All right, so that is, that's confirmed. That's my actuals amount. If I change that to budget, there's my budget amount. If I change that to forecast, there's my forecast amount. So that value is changing for each one of these. And then by default, when I clear my selection, it is returning my actuals. Now I can take this and I can put this in any of my cards. So I can update my, my values here on my table. I can update the values over here on this. Let me just go ahead and put this in a bunch of new locations. Beautiful. You know, even my little cards here at the top. Just quickly swap these out. By the way, this isn't an actual report. As I mentioned, it's a template that I use, just kind of uh, so with some quick and, quick and dirty data so you can just see the, the output from it. All right, so actuals, budget. There we are. Forecast, budget. You can see now that my data in all of my visuals are changing to whatever value that I'm selecting, allowing for a real cool dynamic way to toggle between different columns in a report. Now I could go ahead and just stop where I am at the moment, but I would like to have a card that's clearly identifying exactly the selection that I'm displaying uh, in this report. So I'm going to go ahead and create a card, or I'm going to use a card that we have up here, and I'm going to take this value selection that I have, and I'm going to specifically take the selected value here, this is what I want to use. And I want to put this into its own visual. So I'm going to create a new DAX calculation. I'm going to select new measure, and this will be called um, value name. And all that's going to be is that selected value right there. I'm going to hit enter. So there's my value name. Now, on any of these cards, like value name, if I added that here, there we go. Now it's reflecting the all. So I can do actuals, budget, forecast. But again, the, the goal is right now, instead of all, I would like it to say actual. So I can update that just a little bit, change this all, because I know the default, if the filter is cleared, is going to be actuals. There we go. Now, if it's cleared, actuals. If I select actuals, still says that. Budget, forecast. And for good measure, let's go ahead and update the title. Call this value selection. There we are. Beautiful. And now, like I mentioned, you have this really nice and easy, clean way to create a value selection here, especially with that variables, which adds a lot of uh, extra value and makes it run really efficiently. Because in theory, I could, have a, I could have 18 or 20 selections, and rather than having that calculation need to be evaluated 20 times, it's going to be ran once as a variable and then just referenced as many times as needed throughout that switch statement, uh, creating a really clean formula to use that's very dynamic. All right, well, thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.